what are some of the main ways you have been involved in interfaith work across the years? Well, over the years, I think it probably started with bits of interfaith dialogue, organising um, sort of discussion evenings, dialogue evenings on particular themes and topics and bringing mm -hmm. people together from different communities, getting people to meet each other, learn to yeah, always become friends. And, and, and that was very positive. And you can see, I felt the, the positive outcomes from that and that the, you know, more of that was needed. Um, when it came to um, be around as interfaith groups were being set up, um, then I think that was quite important. There was a soon after I started work with the community in South End. I'm still we keep working with twice a, a month. Um, we had an opportunity for applying for some money for an interfaith group and then set up a resource centre, and we got that and we set it up. And I thought that was very positive. And reaching at a time when the local council's interfaith initiative was flailing, um, mm -hmm. so we were able to provide an input and an impetus there that got a few things going. We did some work with schools, brought people from different faith communities together, um, and supported a couple of the other initiatives almost to help them get back on their feet. Um, other times here in Manchester, uh, well, I'm in Preston now, but um, in, in Manchester, where obviously I'm based most of the time. All, a lot of the time when you're sort of reaching um, out to set up a new group, uh, whether it's the Faith Network from Manchester, or I've been involved with a couple of initiatives in Bury, the, the opportunity of bringing people together, um, it creates relationships, it helps people get to know each other. You can then maybe do some dialogues, maybe do some education, maybe do other things to support each other, um, maybe organise events for schools or for um, some of the com local communities, something like that to bring people together. Mm -hmm. And though establishing those relationships, some people might be critical about, say, you're not really doing anything other than having a chat over a cup of tea, or, you know, sort of, you know, sort of teas and samosas, as people say. But at the same time, when there needs to be something, people know who to con contact and say, we need to do something about this. So whether it is um, when I was involved in Salam Shalom, um, in Berry, um, Muslims and Jews together when there was a problem in Gaza. Clearly communities felt that we needed to say something about that to try and help communities deal with it. Um, and as Jews and Muslims together we were able to come up with at least a statement even if we didn't organise meetings about it. But I think the statement itself was useful. And it was useful for us producing that. After the Manchester Arena attack um, I could not believe how many people were ringing me. Why are you ringing me? I'm not there. Yeah. But they just wanted to make contact. They needed to reach out to people, whether it was Muslims reaching, wanting to reach out and say, this is not done in our name, and we want people to know that, we want to be with people, or other communities as well responding just as quickly and saying, we want to say to the Muslim community, this is not done in our name. Um, we know this is not done in your name. We want to stand we with you in, so in solidarity. And we all want to be with us in solidarity with the victims because this is unacceptable. This is not <laughs> right. This is um, unjust. We need to be standing in solidarity together. And then whether it was prayer visuals or whether it was other solidarity gather gatherings or whether it was other evenings. Some evenings that were arranged the following week or within the, uh, the next week were changed from their original purpose to be a sort of vigil or prayer gathering or something um, and people wanted to reach out and if people wanted to for the next two three weeks in particular and um, even in the first of the first month there was still the impetus to try and especially with Ramadan following it straight, straight away you know the number of interfaith iftars that were arranged by different mosques by different organizations and just trying to say yeah we're here with you for this we're all standing together none of this is right we feel for everyone is affected um and it's those moments that you know you can see and feel the power of the relationships that are set up through interfaith work um, and you can see how the, the transforming nature of that as well people really want to make a difference and the, the rest of the interfaith work is almost ongoing it's about keeping that going you don't expect everyone to be responding the same way as if there's an emergency or a crisis or a, tr a terror attack or a tragedy. But from after the Westminster Bridge attack, when we managed to get um, the following week, 
at the same time there's a vigil in London. I think we probably almost had more people on the vigil uh, on a, on the bridge at Salford Keys. And we reached from one end to the other, which was amazing, and people coming out. Um, and other events and other times. But also there's a commitment, I think, to actually, you know, let's learn together, let's develop this. So whether it's scriptural reasoning, looking at each other's holy texts and trying on different themes and trying to grapple with those. Whether it's celebrating each other's festivals and finding out what those are about or different themes. Whether it's relationship and sex education and a new um, law to change the way it's taught in schools and how do we address that and how can we work on this together so that it's not the problem some people think it is. There's always scope by work if you have those relationships on working through this together. Um, and yeah, ideally all of those difficult moments and difficult times are the, are the instances where interfaith work can actually shine and say this is what we're here about, this is why interfaith work is so important and we need to go on and develop it further. Have there been any structured learning opportunities such as skills workshops that have helped you in your interfaith work? I think at various stages through some of the things that um, part of some things we probably arranged together, but also some of the the training that's been provided either by you know, whether it is um, a national organisation, possibly like Interfaith Network, or sometimes Home Office things through yeah, dare I suggest Prevent or Counter Extremism, Building Stronger Britain Together. Um, some of those initi initiatives, but also other opportunities around as well, whether it is how to broach certain things also, sometimes the structure, you know, what you, what's the message we're trying to put out there and how to make it more effective, how to sort out the, the administration, the financial management um, or whatever else. So some of those training courses have been vital. Um, at the same time, there is a need, I think, to, um, to provide learning opportunities for uh, people of faith communities, you know, safeguarding. Uh, is now such a big thing and I think, think there's still a lot of faith communities that haven't realised that or learned how to deal with that and what to, to do to um, make sure they are meeting the right standards and, uh, um, and I think there are it's just things on um, learning about different things together um, whether it is study sessions on fasting or scriptural reasoning sessions uh, looking at our texts on all sorts of different topics um, or whether it is um, yeah what else does what do the faith communities need is it about security is it about um, sort of administration is it about impacts and delivering is it about making sure that the message that comes out isn't seen as divisive um, or harmful for society. Um, how can you make sure that what's being said by a faith leader isn't going to be misinterpreted and misunderstood? And what are the, what measures can you take to um, to ensure that's going on? So you know, the list of what learning opportunities there are is phenomenal. Um, I still need um, learning um, in social media and how to use it effectively and what are, and those sorts of things bid writing for any um, faith community or interfaith organisation that needs funding you need to know sort of how bid writing and grant applications have changed and what people are looking for um, so yeah there's lots of things that I think have helped me but also that we need to arrange for, for others as well mm -hmm.